Dusk Tultorn dropped a spicy axe, and with a spicy axe comes a spicy Dory build. Decimated Great Axe is a 4 power 2 handed axe that costs 3 to attack and it reads. The first time this is defended by a non equipment card each turn, half the base defense of target defending card rounded up. So, to break down why we thought this effect was powerful enough to build around, let's go over its strengths. Number 1, costing 3 to attack turns all of our blues into above rate 1 card hands. Number 2, if we also include the effect of the axe into our rate, say the opponent blocks with a 3 block that gets reduced to a 2 due to the effect, we instead get 5 value for our 1 card hand. Number 3, the effect actually scales with cards with higher block values from opponents. So if the opponent blocks with a sink below on our axe, we just got 6 points of value due to turning that sink below 4 block into a 2 block instead. Now, pair this with the fact that everyone and their dog will board in every single D-React they can to try and counter Dawnblade Dory. This deck instead turns that weakness into our biggest strength. So, now that we've figured out that attacking is above right and then forcing our opponents to block on our axe is above that, we built our Decimated Dory deck to drag our opponents into giving us our free value by forcing blocks through giving our axe powerful on hits like card draw or go again on hit, utilizing that with Dory's effect to be able to swing again. So, to quickly go over how we achieved this, we'll go over our main buffs first with Nature's Path Pilgrimage and Steel Blade Supremacy being the best for the raw card advantage it gets if they allow our axe to hit. Next up we have Spoils of War and Warrior's Valor for a similar effect, but instead of drawing a card we're going to be able to give our axe go again to swing in an additional time in the same turn. Next after that we got a big whopping 9 of Felling Swing. The massive raw damage this is able to present doesn't allow our opponents to let us go unchecked unless they want to die very quickly. And then we round out our main buffs with 3 Spill Blood and 3 Iron Song Determination just as our dominate enablers to allow us to end the game. Now as you probably noticed a lot of these cost 1 so I must mention the importance of playing off our tunic counters aggressively with this build and it is the absolute backbone to this deck. Now finally we round out the deck with a high blue count for maximum opportunity to be able to play five card hands and we call it a day. But that's enough chit chat let's get into the gameplay. So off the bat we're up against a Vincent here and they chose to go first. Lucky for me they didn't have much setup just banishing a red deathly whale arsenal and passing to us. So on our turn we have a clear turn here pitch three to play a red felling swing then attack in with the axe for ten. They tank for a bit on how they want to block and they end up playing both a Reduce the Rune Chant and Guardian of the Shadow Realm, which only blocks for 8 all up because of our axe. So they end up taking 2, we just arsenal the other felling and ship it over. On their turn, here comes the power of Vincent, coming in with a 1 card hand, Deathly Whale, and 2 Rune Chants. Really important for us to block out the Deathly Whale effect if we can, as this will set them back with no arsenal and no Rune Chants for their next turn. So easy option for us to AB3 here, then block 6 using 2 of our reds, then they just ship it over to us. Over on our turn, simply swinging in with the axe with our one blue, snap no blocks from the opponent, we pass it over. So it's their turn again, they have a nice hand here, banishing a whale, activating grasp off of a blue, casting a red envelop of darkness, and swinging in with a deathly whale for 8 plus 3 rune chance with the hero ability act. Since they paid the life to their hero ability, we can't fully block this one out to prevent the effect, so just gonna value block here for 3, and look to use my tunic efficiently on the next turn. So all up, taking 8 down to 32, they get 2 rune chance, and then they pass it over. Over to us, we get to show the power of tunic here by playing a cleave and a felling swing and then attack in for 14. Opponent opts to just block with their grasp taking 12 down to 20 so we got a nice health lead here really happy with this turn cycle we pass it to them. Over on their turn they banish another red whale play another red envelop in darkness paying the life again and then they swing in with the whale for 9 plus 4 rune chants. So big turn from our opponent here but happy to block out until our tuna counter comes back up again so we just AB3 of the rune chants then value block 6 on the attack taking 4 all the way down to 28 then they just arsenal pass to us over on our turn simply going to swing in with the axe to get the value out of my blue opponent thinks here for a bit then gives us a grasp and a reduce the rune chant axe triggers on the reduce so they still take one here happy to take a card from them and some more equipment block pass it over to them it's their turn deja vu they banish a whale and play an envelop in darkness but lucky for us both of them are blue this time so only coming in for four rune chants and five from the whale looking at our hand i'm going to use this timing to play a two card hand of sharpen and blue to hopefully take their carrion while arsening this dominate effect to look for the finish. So we just value block with AB3 with our spare blue. We end up taking 6 all the way down to 21. They get their rune chance, they pass to us. So over on our turn, just going to follow the plan, operation kill the carrion. We go sharpen into swing with the axe for 7. They snap block with the husk, so mission success.
success. Looking to Arsenal to spill blood for our Tunic turn next turn. Pass it there then. Over on theirs, they have a five card hand here, so a little scared. They start by banishing a Funeral Moon. Then they follow up by casting an Art of War for Banish Draw 2 and go again on their next attack, banishing another Whale. So interesting things here to consider. They didn't play a Shadow card, so I can potentially block out the whole turn to prevent the Whale effect. I kind of like it since my turn doesn't abuse the spill blood as much as I'd like it to. Also, if no one takes damage, this Funeral Moon might get stuck in their Banish an extra turn. So lots of things here to incline me to block out, even though it's my Tunic turn next turn. So we AB3 the Rune Chance, then block 5 on the Whale. I consider if I want to use the Braces or not, since I know they're going to follow up with a Nebula Blade. I opt into blocking with it in case they play something to break the chain. And then like predicted, they do end up breaking the chain for the Funeral Moon plus Revel and Rune Blood. So now there's 5 Rune Chance coming in, followed by a Nebula Blade attack. So thankfully we played around this. We're able to just take 5 from the Rune Chance and use our second block of our Braces and the Yellow in our hand to block the nebula on him. So at the end, it's an equal game at 16 each, but they pass it over to us and we're just swinging in with the axe for four again, saving both our tunic and our spill blood for a bigger turn. Opponent activates their hood, cycling three cards, a little scary there, but then they end up blocking the axe with their creepers and a card from hand, still taking one down to 14, all goods, pass it to them. Over on their turn, they banish a widespread ruin, play a blue morph skies and swing in for six and two rune chants. The effect on widespread ruin isn't really important, so essentially it's just raw damage to to us so i'm definitely taking the rune chance but now let's figure out how i want to crack back as efficiently as possible so it's a little awkward with three reds in my hand but i have two cycling effects in both my crown of providence and sink below here i'm thinking if i want to crown plus sink on the spoils to look for another blue card and prevent the one rune chant from the morph but i realize they're going to follow up with the nebula blade so i get to just use crown here to filter the spoils and see what i draw first so we do that and we end up drawing into a blue now we take four down to ten from the ruin but now this hand is looking more playable they end up following up up with nebula like expected this is probably the game defining moment so i take my time on figuring out exactly how i want to close this game out i ended up figuring out that the only way i'm going to lose this game is if i say no blocks and they draw into a nice rebel hand the reason that this is the only way we're going to lose the game is because i'm not presenting exactly lethal next turn so i'm unable to interact with them if they do draw the nuts so with that in mind just going to sink below on the nebula prevent the damage and the rune chant keep my hand and then they pass it over so over on our turn we're just going to warriors vela in the swing with axe for seven on hit we get the swing again. So here, opponent is forced to give me their whole hand and won't be able to attack back due to us blocking the Nebula Blade attack last turn. So very happy to time walk them here. We pass it over to them, they pass it back. So our turn again, we don't draw any of our big red cards, but we still have many options here with just blues. I end up choosing to give our axe go again with hit and run and then playing the spill blood and swinging in for six, dominate on hit, swing again. Not even a D-react can stop this due to the axe's effect. So they block with one card for two, taking four down to eight. We activate the braces and swing it again for seven dominate once again axe effect is already triggered once this turn so they get their full three block value out of their card this time but now they're on four and we pass it over and then it looks like we ruined their turn enough they just insta ship it back so very happy to see this just going to play a nice three card hand of cleave into axe for eight while arsenaling the sink below opponent is able to give us their whole hand once again to block out the axe so we just arsenal the sink and pass it over over on their turn they're going to fire off that phantom for six plus three rune chance pretty good for a zero card hand but we have a simple line here of taking the rune chance double blocking the phantom and then they pass so we're down to six but we have tunic coming up again gonna just play the sharpen and nature's path the swing in for 10 opponent gives us their whole hand but still dies due to the axe's effect so ggs so that's it for the video. Wanted to switch up our deck tech videos just a little bit with more gameplay and less explaining. Tell us what you guys think of this in the comments so we can keep giving you guys the best content we possibly can. But thank you for watching to the end and we out. Peace.